Have you ever been in a situation where you had a document and you wanted to create a edible PDF and you went to go look through a whole bunch of options that either they were overly complicated or very expensive? Our friends at OnlyOffice reach out to us to show you a new thing that they're offering called Forms. We'll show you how to do it when you create one from scratch and also one from a already existing document. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Rennix and we're talking about forms today from OnlyOffice. Now, forms take something that was once either overly complicated or overly expensive and brings it down so more people can access these functions because PDFs and things are becoming a more normal part of everybody's day-to-day -day life. Nobody is printing things out and filling them out by hand anymore. The most efficient way for companies to have forms is to have them as an edible PDF for three reasons. One is it's more accessible to everybody, especially uh, from mobile or if they're using a desktop or even a tablet. It doesn't matter your device. Uh, almost every device I know of um, can open a PDF. Two, you don't have to worry about bad handwriting. Um, if anybody who knows me in personal life, I'll put an example of it right here. I have horrible handwriting. So it eliminates that barrier of communication. I can present my form in the same as everybody else. You don't have to worry about the person reading it being able to read it. Also don't have to worry about um, them maybe throwing it away because they can't read it. And three, as far as on the uh, administration side or the people who are actually processing documents. It makes it easier for them because if everything's in the same format, uh, it makes things easier to read. It cuts down on the actual administration side as, or the processing side, as far as you don't have to um, be an interpreter of a thousand different people's handwriting. So let's get into actually learning how to uh, use this. So let's get into it and see how it actually works. So let's go ahead and open up OnlyOffice. There's two ways you can do it. One is through the desktop editor and one is through the OnlyOffice cloud. If you're doing it on the desktop editor, on the desktop version, you can do it from scratch. Just go to form template and there you go. You can go ahead and create everything from scratch. Now, if you want to do it from an existing document, you got to use OnlyOffice cloud. So how do you do that? You need first to have an OnlyOffice cloud account. They offer you a free one. I think you get up to two gigabytes of storage, which that's good. If you go to personal.onlyoffice.com, put your email up, sign up for a free one, connect it. When you go back to your editor, once you did all that, you go to connect cloud, add cloud. And once you put in your credentials and everything, you'll be, it'll, your cloud would be connected to your desktop editor. And that's where the magic comes in. So let's go ahead and get into my cloud. You can take documents that you've created in the desktop editor and add them to the cloud. So how do you do that? You go to actions, go to upload files, and then whatever file you want to do, you upload it. Simple and easy. So now you want to do a form. So let's go ahead and do that. Go to actions. You go down to form template and you can also do from blank on the only office cloud, but we already have our text. So let's go ahead and do that. So from text file that's already uploaded, this is the document that I had created for a uh, fictitious donut shop that we always uh, talk about. Go to create, name it, whatever you want to name it. We're going to go with donut order form. Okay. We're gonna hit the check. Now we're in our donut ordering form. Let's go ahead and make this an edible PDF so we can put it on our website or we can send to people as a PDF document. So we have really five main things that separate forms from anything else. You have your text field, a combo box, drop down, check box, and radio buttons. We're gonna be using all of them. So let's go ahead and start that now. So you wanna make sure your cursor is where you wanna put the field at. So what you want to do is hit text and over here you have different um, settings for your um, field. So we want to call this customer name and you have a placeholder text to give people hints on what they should put there. And we're going to put first, last. Okay. But I want to also, whenever this field changes, I want another field to change with the customer's name too. So further down in the document, we have sign here but I want to put a field there. Whenever the customer types their name at the top, it'll show up down here. So let's go ahead and do text field. And where it says key, we look at the field we just created called customer name. So you see where it says connected, two fields are connected to customer name. 
So if I put my name here, and if I scroll down, it automatically populates right there. The next one is gonna be, uh, we're gonna do another text field, but we're gonna do a little bit different. So make sure your cursor's here, have text field there. We know that some addresses aren't a uh, fixed length, right? So we know that addresses can be very long and multi-line, and that's where these settings come into play. So what we wanna do is we wanna call this one address, and then we want it to be a fixed field. We want it to also be multi-lined, right? As you can see, the um, text dropped a little bit, but you can go ahead and make stuff a little wider, a little longer so you can fit your text on there. Let's say if I want my address is one, two, three, Jane Smith Lane, right? That's fine. You got that right there. And what if it's uh, like in like apartment 55 or something like that? You see how it automatically adjusts to whatever the length is. So you can do multi-line fixed length and have uh, something as important as an address there. And you know, you got things like city. City would just be another text line. That's fine. State is what we're gonna do our first drop down. So drop down, you're gonna hit that right there. It's a little different. So we'll name this one state. And right here is the value. So whatever values you need to have on there, um, you gotta type in. So you have, in the states, you have AL, and it's a little tedious depending on how many options you're gonna have, you know, AK, and so on and so on, right? And so whenever you go over here to choose item, you'll have the option to choose however many drop downs you have on that one. Zip code is another one of those text field ones. Email is another one, right? Let's go back to zip code. You know that in the States, I'm not sure how it works uh, other places, but in the States, you have a five digit zip code. No matter where you live at, you live in a five digit zip code. So we can limit that. So you don't want anybody to put that in. That is not a valid zip code in the States. So what you can do is you go over here to character limit. So I only, I only need five characters and you can uh, comb them out so they're evenly uh, distributed. So if I lived in 48765, it'll look like that all the time. You don't necessarily have to have the comb characters, but it depends on what the look you want. So you want it spaced out and evenly in the text cell, you could do that too. Don't necessarily need it, but you know, if I try to type in more, I'm typing in five, four, I'm trying to type in more, it won't let me type in anymore because it's set at a limit of whatever you want in this case. Five. So let's do a uh, checkbox. So checkboxes are there for people whenever you want them to make a multi-selection or have the ability to make a multi-selection. So I may want more than one type of donut at this party. So let's do checkbox. So with each each selection, we're gonna put a checkbox right next to it. So we can select multi different ones and have as much as we want, right? If we want different twist or powder, whatever type of donut we want, we can have it there. And that's what um, check boxes are good for. If we don't want them to have the ability to choose more than one, that's where we use our next option called a radio button. So right here, we're gonna put radio buttons in on each one of these. So now if they wanted to choose between uh, home, or event, you can't choose the same one. You have to choose uh, one or the other. Doppler staff can't be in more than one place at one time. Another one is combo box. And what combo box does, so combo box takes text field and drop down and smash them together. You have an ability to put in custom information, but you also have some ability to have some suggested uh, boxes also. So you're looking at how many people are gonna attend. Let's go ahead and put a combo box right there. So you could put different values. Let's say 100, we'll change that to 200, excuse me. And we'll change this to 300, add. So now I can do a drop down, pick one of these, or what I can do is change the amount to 121, or I can change it to 254, or whatever I wanted to do. 
uh, it gives you that flexibility of even of having some suggestions and also the flexibility if those suggestions don't quite match up with um, the customer or the person putting in information's needs. They can put in whatever they want to put in. You can also make any of these fields required. So if I click required and I don't put anything in, the form will not be complete until I put that required in. For things that are crucially important, like maybe people's names and uh, where they're gonna be, what's the address of the venue, like anything that's essential you can mark as required. What I usually do just to make sure everything looks good, I wanna view it and make sure that everything's good. You can go through the fields, make sure you got everything. You'll see it changing. So if I start up here, you'll see next field, next field, and make sure you got everything you need to get. And so you can go ahead and save it. You can save it as O form and upload it to a website, or you can download it as a PDF. Save it as a PDF. Now I can take it and you can open it up in a PDF reader that allows the change and uh, that allows you to edit different things. Not every PDF reader allows you to do this. That's pretty much how you do forms. It's, it's simple. Um, it's easy once you get the hang of it and um, it's not overly complicated. Forms is a very useful addition when it comes to only office. I think it helps people who actually need to do this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, do it. And it's you don't have to worry about it being overly complicated or behind some extremely high paywall. How do you usually use PDFs? Is it on mobile? Is it on tablet? Is it on a computer? And how do you use it? Do you use it to read books? Do you use PDFs to uh, do your work? Let me know in the comment section. If you want to learn more about OnlyOffice, I did a video where I use it at work for one month and nobody noticed. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.